Hey guys, it's Jordane. I took another look at my workflow and I tried to improve it. Here are the two outputs that I had. Here's the old one. Now, the issue with the old one is that there's transparency in the train cabin here, as you can see, and there's a little bit of, of green spilling, and even you know the hat is not showing up 100% of the time either. So I decided to take a crack at it and figure out how I could improve it a little bit more. And here's another updated one that I did. Now the cabin is completely uh, solid. Uh, with the method that I used, uh, it, it's not moving so it doesn't actually go through uh, the SVD video node. So it's not being animated, but this is basically just a static image anyway, even in the other video, you didn't really see it move that much, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. And here, you, you get more of the hat, but you know, there's some artifacting around the, the person, there's a little bit of you know, yellow there that's showing up, there's a little bit of fringing here. So it's really about the trade-offs on, you know, what would you prefer, having a little bit of green spill or having a little bit of artifacting? You know, it's not perfect, it's, it's experimental, so you gotta choose your poison. Anyway, I'll go over two different workflows that I did. So one method was basically doing the same thing, having two images going through the SVD, having the background and the foreground going through the, uh, the SVD conditioning. And the only difference here is with the layer is that I do a cut by mask and I was getting an error with this image composite relative node because the number of images didn't match uh, this generation here. So I just ended up repeating the batch a number of times. And for this node here, the repeat image batch, there's only, the max is 64. So if you want to get higher than 64, you have to do something like this where you, know, you multiply it by two or three and then you'll be able to get whatever number that you want. Now, um, you know, for this, you know, with the number of images that you generate here, you have to figure that out. And you could basically figure that out by just you know, clicking this and then previewing and then seeing how many images get generated and then you could you know, do the math and figure out how many frames you need. Um, keep in mind that depending on what value this is, it's going to change. So if you have the multiplier set to something else, it's going to change it. But the easiest way to do it is just, you know, preview image. So that's the, the one big difference with this new workflow is that instead of treating this as another image segmentation, because it would end up causing transparency issues when you throw it through the image segmentations, I'll show you some other nodes that I tried to segment it with a mask and to get it to work without it. The biggest issue is like you don't know what nodes accept just one image or a batch of images. And it's like the same thing with masks too. It's like sometimes you could grab a mask from the image and sometimes you can't and it's just, uh, it, it's very difficult unless you like do a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly what nodes go where. So anyway, continuing on, so we repeat the image batch the same amount of times that we generate from the SVD here, and then we plop that into the image composite relative, and then we do another one here to combine the other one, and then we output it to the video combine and to save image. Now we could, it's still, we could only use the GIF because for whatever reason, the SVD, uh, no, it's not even the SVD, it's the image segmentation that messes up the, the generation here. For whatever reason, it throws out an error so you can't convert it to a video. You have to save it as an image, open up you know, this, new, uh, this new workflow, and then just load the images again. You could run it through an upscaler if you want, and then you'll be able to create your video that way. So that's one method that I used or that I tried and I got good results. I, this is definitely my preference because with this, you know, you're able to, you know, add in as many layers as you want. Like, let's say if I wanted to put, I don't know, like a table 
down here, I'd be able to just load up a PNG, you know, copy these values here, you know, make sure that it's put in the proper place and basically just do the exact same thing as here and then just add the, the uh, images on top of each other and then just link them together and then you'll be able to generate, you know, another table here. Another method that I tried was using masks instead of using the image segmentation, which in the end, I, I find that image segmentation is the, the better option. Um, because with this option here, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a bunch of different masks for each of the images. So as you see here, once the images have gone through the SVD loading, it takes a look at the color to mask and and I'm setting the green to 255 so that it removes the green. And then I negatively expand it. So I'm contracting the mask here to be able to remove some of the green. And then I use this image composite mask to be able to link these two pictures together. And then you can see it's the same thing here. Go through the color to mask again because this image is going to be combined. And if you're working on workflows, what's great is, you know, every time you want to see a step, you just do preview image. And this helps you a lot if you're trying to troubleshoot any issues in your workflow. Anyway, it goes through that. And then you combine this combined image with this image as well. And then after that, you have to do a, a get image range from batch. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but I was getting the, the very last frame. There was always like a bunch of green artifacting. I was like, okay, well, I don't want the last frame. So the easiest way to do that was just to get this image range from batch. Then I throw it into an upscaler and then I throw it through the interpolation. And then here I was able to generate it as a, uh, as a movie or as a video format because I wasn't using the image segmentation node. So this works well, but the problem with this one is, you know, you could see green artifacting. You know, there might be other nodes that are out there. I looked at a ton, but I wasn't able to really smooth it out that great. And th there's other issues with it too. It's like, even if you were able to get rid of the green edging, it's like you could still see in the hat here that it's, you know, the brightness from the background is causing, you know, highlights in his hat to be green, which isn't really desirable. But there's, you know, different cases. This is another technique. This technique is a lot faster than running it through the image segmentation. All right, here's a bunch of nodes that I tested out and I'll review some of them. This is, you know, more for me when I go back to it, I'll know what I tested and what worked and what didn't work. And hopefully this will help you too for creating your own workflows. The grow mask, yeah, there was some issues with the grow mask. I found that it ate too much of the green, so it really started cutting into the faces of my characters. So I didn't really like this option. I'd say that the better option, if you are using image segmentation, if you're going down that route and you're using the, uh, the green screen version for your characters, I'd say adjusting these values is a lot better than using the, the grow mask. Cut by mask, this works well. I used it for this workflow here, uh, right here. So cut by mask, I did that for this PNG. And I did this because for whatever reason, it does not let you, like I can't put this load image into just repeat batch because this would obviously be a lot easier just plopping this in to here and then having it combined just based off of the PNG because in here it looks like there's uh, there's transparency but for whatever reason I, I guess it's because the mask is there and it just makes it white so it doesn't actually it's not actually transparent value even though it looks like it so that's why I had to do this weird invert mask convert mask to image and then cut by mask to be able to get the transparency values again so that I could combine it so it, uh, it combines the two images instead of just you know having all this being white in the background. 
Invert mask, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, basically, it just changes the mask from white to black or black to white. Convert mask to image, yep, use this one a lot. I, um, you know, convert mask to image, I did that here. See, I changed this to a mask, I inverted it, and then I changed it back to mask. And I do this because, I don't know, sometimes they don't take mask values, so that's why I need to convert it. You know, I can't just plop this into here, which is too bad. I'd, well, first I'd have to invert it first and then put it in there. But yeah, you have to convert it to mask to image on some of these nodes. Uh, image color to mask. So with this one, these are hex values of the color. So this color is for a green screen if you're trying to do that. So this is the number, it's a good one to remember. Um, I tried it, it works well. Um, I'd probably say that the, the, the color to mask, it works a little bit better and it's, there's a little bit more functionality, but I could still see myself using this one over color to mask, but they're very similar. This one's a little bit easier to use because you just need to put 255 to green. Here you have to like color pick the color and then figure out, uh, you have to convert it to a hex value and then put that in there. This is a little easier. You also have the option to change the threshold as well. So a little bit more versatility with this one. Image segmentation, yep, this is great. Um, it's really good for humans. Like it's awesome for humans. It, it, it gets them out every single time. You know, sometimes there's minor artifacts, but I'd say this is a very good tool. Uh, you know, too bad that it doesn't capture like objects like this very well. And you know, I tried like mask to seg where, you know, I'd, you know, I'd plop in this mask in here. Um, you know, obviously I'd have to, uh, where's the other mask? Like color to mask. Um, you know, if I change this to a PNG, then I'd, I could run the invert and then put it in there. Then it would have the mask to segs and I thought that might work, but I tried it and I didn't get the, it wouldn't work in some of the other nodes, probably because this returns an array of images. Um, I couldn't find one that just had an image. This method might have worked. Um, and if it does work, then that would be great because then I'd be able to upload a PNG here and then actually have some slight movement in the train cabin and uh, it would work. So this, this is a method that I should probably look into in the future. If you know that there's a node that only outputs one image from here, uh, let me know. That would uh, help a lot, and then I could test it out. Uh, but, but, but feather mask, image blur, eh. I mean, image blur, like if you convert the, the mask to an image and then use image blur, it works well, but it blurs the entire image. I thought it might be able to blur the edges so that I could you know, kind of remove some of the green by eroding it and then blurring it, but didn't work. Same with feather mask. Feather mask is like the entire image. You know, it's not just the edges. Uh, split image with alpha. Uh, I think I use this. I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing that what this does is if you've got, you know, a node that has, you know, an image and you want to, let's say this node is getting images that are PNGs and you want to be able to grab the mask from the PNG, then you'd be able to use this. Paste by mask. So this is similar to like the image composite relative, except you know, you're able to take in a mask. I did try it. Um, for some reason, I kept getting like pink outputs. So I don't know if there's like a bug on this node, but yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't use this one. Uh, these are the ones that I use. You know, you could choose the background, which is great. So that definitely helps when you've got, you know, obviously transparent backgrounds. This one, you've got a little bit more controls with uh, some of these values here. Mask er erode region, again, I think this is, uh, it erodes it too much for my liking. Um, I wish there was a little bit more fine tuning with this. You only have whole values instead of like floats, which is too bad. Uh, image composite mask, so this is, uh, this is actually a good one as well. Similar to these ones, except you could put in a mask. And yeah, I hope you're able to create some cool things. 
there's lots of versatility in, uh, in these workflows because you're able to you know, have a background, have a foreground, and a number of layers. And oh, I'll go open this one. Since they're PNGs, it's easier to visualize. Yeah, so it's great. So I mean, you could, you know, you could use TV screens as like a layer because you know TVs aren't really going to to move around unless you know you're throwing them on the ground or something. But you know, you could have like a number of TV screens, and you could align them with you know different you know different scenes. So you know, you can make this as large as you want and to be able to get whatever output you want. Um, yeah, obviously this is great for windows on moving objects like I did here with the train. So, I mean, if you had like an airplane and I don't know, you want to see a volcano exploding in the background, that'd be pretty cool to generate something like that. Or, you know, in a submarine and you see like this giant squid or something underwater, it's another cool thing that you could generate. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you guys have any ideas for any type of scene using this technique, let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll consider making some of them. Anyway, hope this helps anybody working on any of their workflows. And go to the description down below to grab the updated JSON files so that you could play for it yourself. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.